This is me. And by me I mean Joel, the owner of a beautiful moustache and a wannabe YouTuber that recently fell in love with 3D printing. Hello, hello. Oh, hi Dominic, how are you doing? And this is Dominic, a bearded man from Czech Republic that is a fan of Fight Club, The White Stripes and learning new things. He's also an active Redditor and he's missing a leg. Dominic lost his leg on April of 2017. He fell from the 8th floor of the apartment building he was living in. Yes, yes. and then uh, I had like all the all organs messed up, right? All operations and, and the leg. But that's basically the only thing that happened now. I'm perfectly fine except for the leg. Dominic is a survivor and a badass. And he deserves to look like one. I met Dominic at r slash prosthetics on Reddit. Because, as you can imagine, Dominic has a leg prosthesis. Prosthetic limbs have come a long way since the wooden legs on Pirate. They are stronger, lighter, more comfortable and extremely boring. A standard leg prosthesis is constituted by three main parts. The socket, the tube and the foot. They work well as a leg, but they sure don't look like one. And that is where I come in. I wanted to 3D print a prosthetic cover for Dominic. Something that gives him the shape of a leg and the look of a badass. To get started I needed this prosthesis, which I obviously couldn't get because he needs it. So I asked him if he owned a 3D scanner, so he could send me a 3D model of the prosthesis, which would work as a digital reference for my work. And he actually didn't have one. Luckily for me, he knew a company in Prague that has a great 3D scanner and it's used to 3D scanning prosthesis. They promptly 3D scanned both his leg and prosthesis, and in less than a week I had a high fidelity 3D model on top of which I could build something awesome. To get a 3D model of a prosthesis, or any other object for that matter, you don't really need a 3D scanner. You can use a technique called photogrammetry, in which you take a bunch of photos of the object and use a dedicated software to process the pictures into a 3D model. It works fine and it's completely free. But that's a subject for another video. Once I had the 3D models to work with, I used Mesh Mixer, a free 3D modeling software, to create a mirrored version of Dominic's healthy leg, which I then adapted to his prosthesis using the scope tools. Next, I lowered the triangle resolution on the meshes and exported both models as STL files. These files are what I used as reference to create the cover, but before I could build anything, I needed a cool design. There are a lot of cool prosthetic cover designs online and we can also find awesome artwork in movies like Anita or video games like Cyberpunk 2077. But I wanted to create something original, something that matched as much as possible with Dominic's expectations. Dominic told me he wanted a black and yellow cover with a futuristic vibe, so I sketched a three-piece cover with hexagon cuts on the bottom part, because everyone knows that futuristic means hexagons. I showed the sketch to Dominic and he liked it, but he asked me to raise the cut on the ankle, create a curved cut on the middle instead of a straight one, and make the hexagon smaller and more random. Additionally, I added some cuts that function as access points to reach the inner screws of the prosthesis. The final design was made of four parts. The inner adapter that functions as a clamp to fix the cover on the prosthesis, the inner black part that gives a dark background look and holds everything together structurally and aesthetically, and the yellow bottom part and top black part that are there to look cool. To translate the designs into 3D models, I used SolidWorks, an insanely expensive CAD software that you don't have to use. There are great 3D modeling softwares you can download for free, like SketchUp or Fusion 360. For starters, I used the exported files from Mesh Mixer as reference to create a leg shaped surface that I can thicken and use as the main shell. After making the main cuts, I started to cut the hexagons. If you're wondering how I made the hexagon cuts, well, I'll share a little secret with you. If you create a 2D sketch in SolidWorks, you can use the wrap tool and select the option Scribe to project the 2D contour onto the 3D object. The thing is, the Scribe option only cuts superficially. What you actually want is to go deeper. You want to underscribe. You want to subscribe. Okay, this is how I actually did it. Here's a time lapse with some cool music over it.
In the end, I sent some pictures to Dominic and he loved it. After exporting all the models as SDL files, all that remained was to 3D print them. And that is where this baby comes in. This is Jordan. Well, his actual name is FLSun QQ, but I baptize it as Jordan because of how tall and black it is. Hey, isn't it weird that you're saying that? Why? Well, you're comparing a 3D printer to a basketball legend just because it's black and tall. I actually got this printer after I started making this video, and there's a reason for that. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you know I have other printer, namely Claudette, Sabrina, and Dumbledore. They are all great, but for this I needed something different. Because I needed to print a leg, which is taller than its wide and it has a low surface area at the base, I needed a printer with a static bed, so the part wouldn't wobble or even fall from the oscillation. I also needed at least 30 cm of printing height, a light printing head with a good positioning precision and a high top printing speed, because all of the parts I needed to print were quite big and I didn't want them to take more than one day to print. And that's the reason why I got this Delta printer. It has all that I needed and it's really affordable. If you're interested you can find the link in the description. The first part I printed was the clamp adapter, which are actually two parts, but who's counting anyways? Then I printed the inner black part because it's the biggest part on the cover and I wanted to be done with it. Everything went great until it didn't. Meet George, my younger brother and the person who was supposed to make sure the printer didn't run out of filament. The mess. I printed the cover again and came out great. Next I printed the yellow bottom part and the futuristic hexagons came out beautiful. I saved the top black part for the end and because I was low on black filament, I actually had to use the pause feature on the printer. I recharged the printer with more filament and resumed the print. It worked great, the part came out perfectly. The next step was to assemble everything. I actually had footage of the entire assembly process, but for some reason part of it got corrupted, so I can only show you how I prepared and assembled the top black part. I started by using a Dremel to remove the excess material I left as support. Then, I used sandpaper to finish the edges and make the cover more glue friendly. To join the top part to the cover, I used fast drying glue, because time is money and slow glue is for losers. This is the final result. I tested the clamp adapter with a 3mm tube I had laying around, and it worked great. The cover was ready and awesome, so I packed it with bubble wrap and boxed it to send to Domino. Okay. Now that this is properly packed, I need to go to the post office. So, today is Thursday, the 8th of August, and I need the package to get there next Wednesday. So, fingers crossed. The cover was on its way to Czech Republic. It took some time for the package to get there. Five days went by, and I finally heard back from Dominic. As you can see, it was uh, repacked by DHL. I don't know why. Apparently it was for uh, it was security checked, but but it was fine. It was fine. It was all wrapped in the bubble wrap, and the cover. I think is uh, I think it looks great. It was very good. It looks solid. Shouldn't break. It looks good. It's great. On the next day, Dominic went to his clinician, who properly assembled the cover on the prosthesis. Uh, I called Dominic one more time to make sure everything was fine, and that's it. Mission accomplished. Dominic looks like a badass. Uh, also, other thing. Uh, how tall are you? How tall? Yeah. Uh, I'm like uh, almost two meters. 197. 197. I knew it. Yeah. It's funny. You know why? Because I'm like I'm like uh, one meter and 65. So yeah. Yeah. Next to you, I look like a midget. 